my soapy kitchen. Today we're going to make mud pies and I'm so excited. Lavender honey mud pies. And I'm going to be using some really great ingredients for this. This is a single use product that I developed myself and hopefully we'll have it in the store soon. So we're going to be sending some of these of course to my different retailers and see if they like them. <laughs> All right, so the ingredients are, we're going to be using some diatomaceous earth, some glacial clay, rice flour, lavender powder, and kaolin clay. And I thought I'd add a little bit of indigo just for color. If that doesn't work, then we'll re reformulate. But uh, I'm really excited about this, and I can't wait to show you how it's done. So let me get all of my ingredients measured out, and we'll get started. All right, let's get started. We've got quite a few really fun ingredients here and I knew it was gonna be a mess because like I said before, we're making mud bars so we're gonna get stuff everywhere. <laughs> so, but we're using our lavender products and hopefully I'll get everything in camera. There's a lot here. So first we're gonna mix our dry ingredients. So we're gonna do our dry phase first. So what I have here is bentonite or di diatomaceous earth rather, not bentonite. Um, diatomaceous earth is awesome stuff, so you can do your, your research on it. Here we've got glacial clay. Now glacial clay has a much denser um, consistency, so it's going to be very heavy and give us a nice gritty texture. Now here is our kaolin clay, so we're going to get lots of clays in here. And that rice, glutinous rice flour that I love so much. It just feels so good on the skin and there's a good reason for that. So do your research a wash on off, well. soak on kind of recipe. So it's not going to, you know, stay on your skin for very long unless you do a really long soak. Now the idea is to give, the idea I had with this is to give the user a sense of a spa treatment at home that's not going to clog their drains but leave your skin feeling as if it has had a mud treatment and we're using a lot of really great stuff here here is the last dry ingredient that I'm going to add to the main batch which is our dried lavender flour no it's not the last ingredient I still have a little bit of indigo there as well and we're just going to add just the tiniest bit of in indigo so we've got like a greeny greeny color there so we're just going to put a dash sorry all right i'll use a measuring spoon give you a better idea i'm going to use the smallest measuring spoon which is a quarter teaspoon on this particular measuring set i'm just going to use that much is a natural colorant. Now we're also using, of course, the lavender itself as a natural colorant, which is pretty fun. And that beautiful glacial clay. So here's my lavender. We've used a spent lavender. We're not using, you know, the grade that you buy in, in a in a at a farmer's market. It's all bright and purple and beautiful and fresh, but it was fresh. It was cut, cut fresh, and it was it was taken after the bees had had their fill. So the field was allowed to fallow and rejuvenate. And we were allowed to come in and have some. So there is, this is still very strong, very powerful lavender. And I am so grateful to have been given some. All right, so this is the mold I've picked. <laughs> but now we're going to work. We've got our dry ingredients semi-mixed. There's a heavier base there. We'll work on that some more. I'm just going to set this aside. And we'll bring out our liquid ingredients so you can have a look see now i'm not sure we're going to need all of this so instead of pouring everything into this i'm going to pour a little bit of this into another container just in case we've got too much here so this is our lavender hydrosol okay. 
and we're gonna add our oil to that because we've also added, okay, so we've got sweet almond oil and polysorbate 80. And I'm hoping it will emulsify. Now this is a fun honey. This honey is from Australia. It's called Australian Iron Bark Honey. So whenever I find a new honey, I get it. And it's gonna take a bit of time for this to dissolve. Let's go ahead and add our honey clot because that's really good for the skin. But we want it to moisturize and not just draw impurities. That's why we've got uh, these additional oils and emollients and humectants and moisturizers added. Just do a little bit of a cleanup there. Okay, so let's get this honey in. And this might take a little while. And it's okay if it doesn't dissolve completely. Now the recipes for the mud bars will be available soon on my website. But you can make your own mud bars the way you like to. <laughs> Just use your favorite clays and see where it leads you. Try to stick to cosmetic or food grade ingredients. Definitely real honey. This stuff is not mixing well, which is good. And we're getting an emulsification, so that's exactly what I wanted. That's why we added the polysorbate 80. Get my little tiny little stick blender in here. We'll see if we can't get this all mixed up well. as we go and that was looking absolutely fabulous we've got enough polysorbate so we don't have floating oils we're gonna have a nice lotion in our bath and this also smells amazing too Now this first batch of mud bars, I'm not going to add additional essential oils. I'm just going to make it straight up natural mud bars. Natural, natural. All of what's in my ingredients is where we're going to get our oils and things from. Now, we're ready to start making the mud. So I'm just going to do another quick little visual. And get some of those lighter clays. Mix in really well, and we'll see how this goes. Now, I might need even more of the hydrosol than we've got. Our is it like bumping all over the place? <laughs> it's gonna be so much fun. So, I'm just gonna stick right in the center. I know I want at least this much. Okay, let's see if it's enough. I don't think it's going to be. No, it's not. So we want a mud pie. We want it to be like a, you know, <laughs> so we can form it into, get it into our mold and make a mold. And I, it looks like we might need more. We might be okay. We'll see here. So close. Oh, this smells so good. Yeah, I still need a bit more. But this is a nice, nice clay. So I'm gonna, before we get it too, too wet, cause you don't really wanna use any more water than you have to because we're drying this out, right? We want a solid product. We don't wanna have to use too much preservative. In fact, I think I'll use a little bit of preservative just because, let me just measure out what I'd need, just in case people wanna reuse it and don't wanna use the whole thing all at once. We're just going to gonna have to really knead it well since we didn't add that in the liquid phase. Just wipe down my bottle because you know 
how my bottles get all dirty as I have a thought in the middle of a creation <laughs> instead of, you know, being prepared like everybody else. <laughs> okay, so I'm liking this. We'll see. We'll see if we can use it. Um, the smell, however, is nice, but I think, I think it's going to really do well as a, as a scented product, especially if you scent it according to the ingredients that you're using, especially if you're using like a lemongrass or if you're using, you know, different florals matter, you know, plant matter in here. You can make any kind of herb into a powder with the right kind of tools. So I'm going to pull this out of here. We're going to work it on the surface. We work the surface here. So we've got our clay. We've got our clay, guys. So now I had this idea that I'd just be able to pour it in. Don't think that's going to happen. And that's okay. Because I think, I think we can still get it into here and get a good impression with this texture of dough. Okay. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put a little, little, little bit of lavender right on the top there. Now I'm not worried about these looking funky because frankly, they're not going into a, a basic solution. They're not going to be changed that way. So we're going to measure out each one on my thing, or maybe I can just divide it and see how it goes. Okay, so I'll just make a log. Or actually, I think I've got a scoop. Like you could do scoops with this. This is the perfect kind of mud scoops. I love it! I love playing with mud. This is going to be so much fun to use as well. I just absolutely can't wait. Oh. Okay, so we'll divide these into six. And we'll see if we've got enough. We might have to do a little bit of give and take from some of them. But I planned on making six bars. I'm going to smooth it out. See that? And then I'm going to push it in. And it looks like that's a bit much for it. So we're going to take back to fit our mold. So I have a couple of these molds because they're just so darn cute. But it might be fun to show you how to make some other pieces. Because you could do a little individual mud mask with this too. Just make sure that you've got a good a goodly amount in there. Okay, so we've got a smooth surface once again. Approximately same size. I'm going to press it. I'm going to add a little more. That one. <laughs> Maybe laughing. I love the sound of laughter in my home. Okay, we a wee bit much. Just. Trim that off. So you want enough liquid that you're not cracking when you're molding. That is my goal anyway, and hopefully that's what we'll see when we pop these out of the molds. I'm going to try popping them out before they're completely solid. Just go I can always put it back in. Now I'm going to put it in the freezer. 
just to make it easy. All those little marks from my gloves, but that's okay. Just gonna make sure you put it in evenly. And again, I cannot stress how important it is to use cosmetic grade ingredients. I am loving this glacial clay mix. This has a very earthy, natural scent to it. You want something a bit more pure, then you're going to need to add some more refined ingredients like essential oil of lavender for one. But not enough. Get some more in there. More here and then I'll get another mold those in the center to make some little individuals for the face so these are body bars I took too much of that off how did I manage Take off too much. Okay, so I popped those in the freezer and now I've got little macarons we can make. So I'm going to actually dust these with a little bit of mica as well. As oh, got nature soap, on. it's a vibrance mica here. And we'll see if I can just. Glow color. Just trying to dust it all around. Because we've got the polysorbate 80, this would just be fun. It's going to be like a <laughs> I love playing with color. You do not have to do this. That's not your thing. You don't have to do this. This is my thing. That's why I'm showing you it. <laughs> this is my cray cray. You pick your own cray cray and be happy with it. <laughs> oh, this is so exciting. Again, we're going to make a little mat round. It's fairly smooth. Let's see much of it we can get in there. So this is a macaron mold. Macaroon, macaron. I don't know how many we'll make. We'll make a few. Hopefully all six because this would be a really great way to just test a few without doing a full like giant bath. And they've made great samples too. Although they'll probably want the macaroons and I've only got a few of these molds. I'd have to make more molds or buy more molds. I think we're gonna get four, maybe five-ish. Let's go over here with the more generous mica cavities. Oh, now I wish I had more leftovers. <laughs> Some full size ones and one half size one. All right, so I'm gonna throw this in the freezer as well and we'll see how well it took an impression and if we prettied it up a little bit. 
Okay, I'll bring you back in a little bit. Bye! Okay, this is pretty cool. I hope I'm recording the right one. <laughs> but check out these little individuals. <laughs> these are so cool! Alright, let me put on my gloves. Ah, oh, that is so pretty. I hope the other ones turn out as well as this little leftover that we've got here because dang that is freaking stinking cute so we're just going to put it over here on the drying rack another reason i haven't added essential oils to these is because they need to dry completely and i can always coat them you can either push or pull push or pull Pop these babies out. Let's see, look at that. That's pretty dang awesome. So this is a full size body bar. And you use the whole thing in a bath. So if you're wanting a soaking bathing. So it's gonna take some practice to get it all the way around the mold. But I'm kind of excited to get to use these. I'm so freaking excited. I will definitely be getting some more of these molds. It's kind of neat that you can use them. Okay, let's see what this cookie looks like. That's a lot of mica. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to space these out. So if you want a more fluid, more perfect or maybe use more water but I've got some single use scrubby muds for just a quick in the shower kind of thing but if I want a full bath bar then there we go so yeah we'll call these shower shower mud scrubs and these are going to be our our bath scrubs, soak scrubs, whatever you want to call it. You can either put it in the bath and let it soak or you can mush it all over your body. We're going to do a demo on what this kind of looks like and uh, feels like soon. So hold on. All right. excited to show you my mud bars here they are they're all dried and ready for single use 
And there we go. That's for a big bath. So if you enjoyed this, please click like and subscribe and come on back to my soapy kitchen anytime. Bye.